Welcome to the King's Table, a podcast at a King's Hill Church in Boston where we seek to elevate the Bible over opinion, answering the questions you have. I'm your host, Jonathan Mosley. Today we have with us Derek Smith. He serves on staff with No Campus Left, an organization out of the North Carolina State Baptist Convention. He's a husband and a father of two boys, ages nine and seven. And today we're talking about how can we be a godly father? Enjoy. Derek, thanks for joining us again at the King's Table. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me again. So, hey, you know, last time we chatted, uh, we, we didn't we didn't really share too much personal uh, about one another. So, man, I'd love to hear about your family. Let us into the the Smith family down in North Carolina. Man, the Smith family. Um, we are what you, what what you see is what you get. Uh, we love to have fun. We are silly. Um, sometimes things may be a little chaotic in our house. Um, we have two boys. Um, one, you may hear screaming in the background at some point because he's full of energy. Um, but man, our, our house is, is fun. Um, I think that's one thing that my wife and I really have prayed about and want to create is that our house is this place. It's a refuge, man, that it's a place where when you get home, you can let down your hair. There's no mask. You don't have to be someone. I don't see any hair on you, Derek. No, I can't let mine down. It's it's, it's <laughs> done. It's done. Maybe in heaven with my, my resurrected body, I might have this long, flowy hair or something. There you go. There you go. I don't know how that works, but um, no, man. Really, our home, uh, a refuge, a place of safety and, and, and laughter and fun, a place where you can can weep. Um, and and so it's just been cool to kind of see that in our home. So um, yeah, great home. Been married to my wife coming up on 12 years. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's been a joy. Yeah. I love that. You, you've alluded to it a little bit here, but man, I know when I was, uh, when I was in college and, and even a little bit after college, you know, I, I didn't get married until a good bit later. Uh, once I graduated several years down the road, but whenever I, whenever I had the opportunity to step into a dad's house, a husband's house, and you know, see see a family at work. God was beginning to put a vision in my heart for what would be a God honoring family, and He continues to build that even now. But just being able to be a part of families' lives and their activities and their routines, it really gave me a vision for what I wanted my family to be like. So I, I would love to hear from you. What what vision has God put in your heart to kind of lead your family so that they're sold out for Jesus? Yeah, man, I think um, one of the things that we try to do is paint a tangible picture of what it means to follow Jesus. Both of our boys have professed uh, faith in Jesus. Uh, my oldest have been baptized. My youngest asked me a couple weeks ago to baptize him in the pool. And I'm like, you're just being funny. Um, I'm not going to baptize you just yet until you can tell me clearly what it means to be baptized. Um, but man, we, we like to create a vivid picture of, Hey, here is what it means to follow Jesus. And so for us, um, the people we have in our home, we're constantly having people in and out of our home, um, for meals, for hanging out, allowing our kids to see that, um, allowing our kids to be a part of serving. And so, um, I think of this, um, community, um, not too far from us during COVID who was hit with some some situations and how um, my wife would take the kids and they would deliver food to this family. Um, our neighbors who are not followers of Jesus, we talk about that with our kids. We're open about um, asking them to pray for those neighbors to receive Jesus. So a lot of, of what I believe God has put on my heart as a husband and a leader of this house is to just embody what it means to follow Jesus. Um, another way we do that is repentance. Um, I think I'm really big on repentance, and I often say the church is filled with a lot of confessing saints, but no repentant saints, and confession ain't oh, repentant. Oh, man, why don't you unpack that one for me, Derek? <laughs> uh, we do, I believe, oftentimes when I'm in circles with Christians, we do a great job of confessing our guilt um, or our conviction, but it stays there. And so it was, man, I was really convicted by that sermon. Man, yeah, I'm, I'm weak in that area too. Oh man, I feel so bad after I heard that. Or man, I feel so bad after I do this. And so everybody's just confessing conviction and guilt. 
But rarely do I hear people sit in a room and just say, God, I am repentant for X, Y, and Z. I have sinned against you. And Spirit of God, would you help me turn and hey man, can you help me repent? Because repentance is 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 action. It is a turning away from something and a turning to Jesus. And so that means, Jonathan, um, in areas of repentance, we need help. Like I, there's times where I need you possibly to help me repent in a particular area, which is turning towards Jesus. And so um, we try to embody that in our house by like repenting publicly. Like my wife and I got in a big argument recently over my idol of comfort and control. And it was, it had to do with time management and a lack of communication. And we were just yada, 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 back and forth in front of our kids in the car, which is a no, no for us. (laughs) Um, And we were headed to our parents' house and I was like, we can't go like this. And my wife's like, well, you can go back home. And I'm like, no, I'm not going home. We all need to go home and we need to sit down and have a family meeting because we were just super frustrated. And so we sat on the couch and I started off and I asked my kids, so what emotions do you have right now? They share their emotions, their frustrations. And we all just started talking about our emotions and we started repenting. Um, And then my wife and I had a follow up conversation. We're like, man, we wouldn't have wanted to go that way. But I think what we just did for our children is to show them that in marriage, you're going to have arguments and confrontation. And the way to resolve that is to repent and acknowledge where you went wrong. And so that, that, that's what we did. And so we embody that um, for our children. There, that's, uh, man, thanks for sharing some personal illustrations there. You know, I think for, for us, you really, we kind of kind of have three things in my mind in terms of uh, vision for our, our family. One is that it's, it's grace driven, mm. right? We're going to fall. Uh, we're going to mess up. Uh, but if God is in covenant with us, that means he's not given up on us. And, uh, and so what you just highlighted, marriage is this, and, and our kids need to see that, right? I, mean, I know our episode here is dear dads, but, uh, but our kids need to see what it looks like to have a committed covenantal love with, uh, with our wives. So grace driven, uh, uh, also just worshipers. I want our family to worship together. I, Man, I, I remember the first time I ever saw a family devotion. I didn't grow up even hearing that term before. But I walked into a pastor's house in Lakeland, Florida, uh, and uh, joined them for dinner one night. And after dinner, uh, they sit around the living room, you know, on pillows, some on couches, one on a chair. And they, they sing a couple hymns, and the dad brings out a Bible, and he reads it and chats about it. I was blown away. I'd never seen that before. So just wanting us to be worshipers, having uh, just music that that treasures, loves, rejoices in God, where we can do that together. But also, I think teammates, so grace-driven worshipers, but also teammates. Man, uh, I think I told you I have I have two girls, one girl in the way, so it's going to be whew, it's going to be a uh, a house filled with with women, which I'm grateful for. But man, something. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, I guess maybe months ago we finished the book of Nehemiah, but something I'd never seen before reading through the book was uh, when Nehemiah is going, he's got mobilizing Israelites to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. It says that uh, Shalom and his daughters got a section and they got to work together and they built the wall. They helped on this one particular section. And my heart was so moved by that because here's a father getting his girls involved to restore the glory of the city that belonged to God and when I think about teammates, there's a goal in mind. And uh, man, with my wife and my girls, our goal is that we would make much of Jesus, see his kingdom expanded through our unit. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the vision for us, grace-driven worshipers, teammates. Derek, as far as for you as a, a father, as a husband, are there guiding verses that you go back to again and again that provide sort of anchor points or give you some endurance to keep being faithful to your family and to God? Mm, The infamous um, uh, Ephesians 5. um, Man, I can tell you, you love the book of Ephesians and I love that. I know, bro. 
it's like a, it's like a, it's like a go to. Um, super clear. It, it, I love anything. You know, um, strength finders in my top five is communication and focus. And so okay. I value things being clear and concise. So go. anytime I can read something in the Bible that's super clear, I'm like, oh, that's easy. <laughs> this is, you know, boom, this is it. Um, but yeah, man, I have to really remind myself, especially with my boys um, and, and raising boys and just my natural temperament, um, kind of like of author authoritarian type of, of, of guy, um, to not provoke my children to anger. Mm. Um, and so often I'm having to go, man, I just provoked my children to anger. They are frustrated with how I responded to a particular situation and I need to go mm. and repent. And so it, again, it's this running theme of repentance, confess your sins that you might be healed according to James. Um, and then, you know, husbands loving your wives. I think this is going to be a, a forever growing um, aspect of my marriage until Jesus returns or or calls me home. And that is loving my wife as Christ loves the church. Um, what does it look like for me to love Lashana well, to serve her well? And then Philippians chapter two, man, it is one that when I hear the Holy Spirit throw it in my head, I'm like, ugh. You mean I need to begin exalting the needs of others before my own? Like, man, I want to do this. I mean, it could be something as practical as my wife says, I want to eat here. And in my head, I'm like, I do not want to eat there. I don't even like that restaurant, Definitely but she eat wants there. to eat there. Yeah. So what does it look like for me to say, hey, let's go there and eat and not sit at the dinner table the whole time with my lips poked out, sassing back and forth. Like, <laughs> excuse me, this food is, you know, like how do I even create an enjoyable experience for her? And so like those are, um, those are guiding principles. And man, Ezekiel 36, bro, um, I really love it. it. It is the imagery of like, God knew that it was going to require him in order for his people to be saved. And so he, it clearly shows in Ezekiel 36 that God has done everything to initiate your salvation. But I love how it talks about the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. And so it was a verse that I prayed for my children and they both profess faith in Christ at five. And it's still something that I pray for them um, because I know when I see them doing things, I'm like, man, I'm trying to change their behavior and they don't need behavior modification. They need the Holy Ghost to get a hold of their hearts and change their hearts. So spirit, you do it um, as I pray for them. That's really good. That Philippians 2 is uh, it's a punch every time I read it. No matter when I read it, it's always a punch to my ego. <laughs> uh, man, I think the verse for me, it's been a it's been a guiding verse for a while. It's Luke twelve thirty two. It's a short one, but uh, it's fear not, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And and that verse for me has always been uh, a breathing in of all God is for us, right? Fear not, little flock. So if I'm a little flock, I'm little, but that also means that I have a big shepherd. And it's my father's good pleasure. So God's my father now, in addition to being my shepherd, to give you the kingdom. God is also my king. And so when I, when I know God is my shepherd who's guiding me, I can live in this world without angst or worry. Yeah. Because I know God's my father. I, I'm secure in his love. It fr frees me from trying to earn the love of men and finding identity and status or profession or possessions. And when I know God is my king, that brings about humility, but also confidence. And yeah. um, what I, you know, as I think about that verse, as I try to live it out, uh, my my kids need to see a, a bigger child living under the authority of his father, and uh, and where I'm I'm always going to be a child in my father's eyes, and uh, and so letting letting them see, uh, you know. I want them to see my humility before him, my confidence in him, my love for him. Uh, so yeah, that verse has always been good. It's just, it's just been a breath of fresh air for me. Uh, Derek, you, you talked about this a little bit already, but uh, what does discipling look like for your kids right now? I know it changes from season to season as they get older and, you know, but right now, what does it look like? Yeah, I, 
um, use these two phrases, discipling in the mundane um, and then discipling in the small moments. Um, and so for a while, I thought discipleship for my children was these big moments, which were family devotions, reading the Jesus Storybook Bible at night, praying together, church, like just the big events of our lives. I thought, man, this is how I disciple my family. I do these particular things. But then through reading books, um, some parenting books, I began to realize that discipleship is the mundane. It is the day-to-day of virtual school. And my kids off task or getting on Zoom calls late and me trying to help them understand at nine and seven what it means to live by a schedule. It is the one kid smacked another kid or pushed one kid's head under the water too long and they're screaming in the pool. And so I start screaming at them, but then have to go back and go, (laughs) this is a Michael shit moment. Let's not try to get them to just stop doing what they're doing. Let's disciple their hearts. And so, so much, um, just confessing so much of my parenting at times is just trying to get my kids to stop doing what they're doing in the moment because it's inconveniencing me and it's stepping on my idol of comfort. Uh, And so my wife does a great job of this, of having to step back and go, okay, I need to disciple their hearts because something is going on inside their hearts that is contributing to their their behavior, the whole fire smoke analogy. Mm -hmm. Um, And just even James talks about, um, you know, what causes bickering among you? Is it because you, you you have not because you ask not, you want something and you don't have it. And so that that's going on inside of my children's heart at times. And so, um, yeah, Mm -hmm. learning to disciple in the mundane and learning to disciple in the small moments. That's really good. Yeah. I I want to echo that too. That's something that's the thing about discipleship. It's not, it's not something you turn on and off. It's, it's really not even a category when it comes to raising kids. It's, it's constant always. Uh, it's something that I think we've all learned in this season is that uh, uh, Sundays are supplemental times for kids being informed in their walk with Jesus. It really is. It really is the, the, the family. That's the primary unit for discipleship. Yeah. Uh, Especially when a lot of churches have been closed, it's uh, is you know, is discipleship still happening in our homes? And uh, you know, our our kids are a lot younger, uh, but it, it has been sweet. Our 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 oldest is about two and a half, and she uh, she's at the point now where she can uh, say words and 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 even form some sentences and. So there's a small routine that we have right before her nap time. She loves Bible time. She has a little chair that she sits in and we go through these little flashcards, really yeah. kind of fill in the blank, you know, like I'll, I'll say most of the, of the verse and then she'll fill in a couple words, but she, the routine is nice, you know, uh, midday being able to just have that, that little time with her uh, at, at night. We're able to, right before she goes to bed, we're able to pray for, different people we've seen that day typically we always ask her who she wants to pray for it's always like the same three people but but nonetheless um, yeah so I, man just underlining what you're saying there there's the there's the constant discipleship is constant investing mm-hmm. is constant and then there's there's moments that you can build into a child's schedule i i, I think sometimes a child really does thrive on routine and, and when they know what to expect it, it kind of yeah curbs their expectations and their desires and what they look forward to. And also, man, I, I think uh, something I've been reminded of now that I'm in close quarters with my wife all the time is that with COVID-19, that discipling my kids looks a lot like loving their moms well, loving their mom very well. Wow. Uh, it's uh, when uh, it, it's, it's, it's really quite something like when our, when our girls see me show affection to Chelsea how much they giggle and laugh uh, or when we share a kiss. I think they need to see that. I think just being able to see love in action and them getting a visual for what Christ like love looks like, even though I'm uh, working on that and have a really long way to go, even small glimpses of that, I think are uh, informative for, for our kids. So anyway, uh, man, I, th- th- those are some small things, you know, I, discipling I know is going to look a lot different in depending on age and season, uh, but Barry, how how are you continuing to learn how to lead and love your wife and children? Like, what are some things God's put on your heart in this season as you're uh, trying to be more Christ-like, more engaging, more loving? What's God talking to you about right now? 
Yeah, man, I think one of the ways I strive to continue to grow is when I'm around, like, just in community, when I'm around other families and see how husbands respond to their children or see how husbands are treating their wives, et cetera. I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, they're so godly. And they're, they're doing <laughs> like, oh man, I need to try to um, emulate that. But then just being open and honest, um, the beauty of, of, of community is um, you can confess areas where you're weak and, and, and seek counsel from others. And so just trying to make sure that I'm in community, um, confessing um, out loud where I'm struggling in, in leading my family or, or parenting my children. Um, and then, man, really my time with the Lord, um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I think that God is you know, bringing things to light, like every, every moment is a teachable moment where it's kind of like, I'm, in, in many cases, the Holy Spirit shows how I could have done something better or reveals to me what was really going on in my heart in that moment um, with, with my children. And so just kind of just, just been sensitive to what the spirit is, is saying and the conviction that comes from that. And then, uh, man, I'm, one of the things I learned been in like prosperity gospel or maybe more Pentecostal churches is just a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And so what does it look like for me to pray and ask the spirit to give me ideas? Um, and so that's typically what I do. OK, God, we're, we're going away. Holy Spirit, give me revelation on like things my wife and I should talk about when we go on our little vacation or God, what are some things I should do with my family? God, what what is my kids craving for me right now? And the spirit revealed that, like with my oldest, the spirit was revealing to me, um, which was quite amazing that um, he is believing this lie that I love his younger brother more than him. Um, and God gave me that revelation. And I was able to have a conversation with him and ask him about that. And he's kind of like, uh, I mean, maybe. Um, and I'm like, OK, let me affirm my love for you and just just loving on him. Um, so sensitivity to the spirit, man. He knows all things. Man, I, I love, I love that. Uh, one, what I heard you say is, man, if we're, if we can't lead ourselves, we're not going to lead our family. It's this time with Jesus, the time being in his word, being with him, lingering, just being able to, uh, get our, get his word in our hearts. That's, that's, that's going to make us better husbands and fathers. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but crazy thought actually treating the Holy spirit as a person that he is, that we can talk to. And uh, that we can say, hey, Holy Spirit, bring to mind things that I need to talk to my family about. That's man, that's that's good. That's that's gold, man. Uh, I say something that the Lord is teaching me about right now is uh, intentions versus, versus action. Mm. Yeah. Second Corinthians eight eleven, Paul he's going to this church at Corinth, and they said they were going to give to help out a, a poor church, and so he he says, so now finish doing it as well so that your readiness and desiring it may be matched by your completing of what you have. So they desired to give and now he's calling on them to actually do it, you know, and uh, intentions versus action. Uh, I think a family that flourishes spiritually is the dad taking the leadership role of initiation of initiating service, initiating sacrifice. Man, you laid this out so well in the story you shared earlier, but even initiating repentance, you know, popping down that pill of I'm sorry first, mm -hmm. you know, and going to our lives and, and uh, you, you've, you know, I actually have down in, uh, as I'm, as I'm thinking Ephesians five, two, man, I, I love the book as well. All right. All right. Uh, but, but the, the role, the role of the husband you know, is to, to, to emulate Jesus, what he does for his bride, the church. And so uh, if we're going to, if we're going to truly take on that role, we're the one that's initiating. Uh, and so even being able to go to our wives from time to time and, and ask them, uh, any way I can help you physically, relationally, spiritually, anything that you need from me, uh, initiating conversations like when are our family devotions going to be? What's discipline going to look like in our home? What boundaries are we going to set up for our kids when they're watching TV? It's not the, the husband's not making the, the sole decision, but yeah. it's, it's getting the conversation going, you know, thinking forward, how can I set up my wife and my kids well up it set them up well so they can be you know, flourishing spiritually. 
Uh, I think it's the dad that that needs to be initiating that. And I think that's what the Lord's been teaching me in this season is there's a, a big difference between uh, intentions and action. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, I, if it's okay with you, I, I'd love for us to to pray for our families. Yeah. So we'll close this episode. Would that be all right? That'd be great, man. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's Lashana, Daniel, and Noah. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Man, okay. And uh, for me, it's Chelsea, Liliana, and Araya. Yep. Man, I'll, I'll start. How about I kick off and you you run it back? There's no football this year, so we'll uh, <laughs> I'll kick it off. Uh, Father, thank you for your time with Derek. Just have enjoyed listening in to the vision that you've given for his family. God, I pray that they would make much of you. Uh, Lord, thank you for the courage it takes to uh, to repent in in front of his wife and his kids, and and yet that shows true authentic faith. And it, uh, God, I pray for. Um, I pray for Daniel and, and Noah and uh, for their faith to continue to grow and grow and, and for Derek to be that loving dad, not to provoke his kids to anger, but uh, mm-hmm. to show them uh, the attributes of God in the day-to-day, the, the mundane, that every moment is a teachable moment. And thank you, Lord, for bringing him just an incredible partner, Lashana, and the, the, the team that they are. Uh, use them to make much of you. Uh, uh, Holy Spirit, would you continue to guide Derek in being a loving father and a loving husband? I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, Father, we are reminded that, that your word says that children are a gift from the Lord. And so, God, we thank you for the children that you've given us. Uh, we believe that they are a gift uh, from you, a gift of your grace. And so we praise you for that. And God, I pray that Jonathan and myself will see that. God, in those frustrating moments with our children, Lord, that we'll be ever so reminded that they're a gift and that they are your sons and daughters, um, image bearers, and we have to love them and treat them and serve them um, that way for it. It does honor you. And so, God, would you give Jonathan patience with his children? Um, Lord, would you give him wisdom with his children? God, I pray for Liliana and Ariah. Lord, I pray Ezekiel 36, Lord, that you'll remove from them a heart of stone and place in them a heart of flesh and that you'll place your Holy Spirit within them and then they will walk in your ways. God, we believe that salvation belongs to the Lord. And so, God, I pray that you would save them at a very young age and Lord, that they will walk with you, women of faith and integrity. Um, of your word and on mission, God. And I pray um, for Chelsea, Lord, that she would be a woman of wisdom, Lord, that you'll fill her with your spirit, Lord, that you would be her refuge, her rock and her strength, Um, Lord, during pregnancy. um, And Lord, just um, just been a wife and a mom. And God, lastly, I pray for Jonathan, Lord, that you will give him um, the power to be the leader that you've called him to be, that your word calls us to be. Lord, fill him with your spirit, afresh. Help them to seek you, to be dependent upon you. Um, Lord, help them to be humble, repentant, um, and to walk in a manner that is pleasing to you, Lord. Um, Help us, God, to be the men that you've called us to be, that we might run this race well, and that we might help others come to know Jesus and others grow as fathers. God, and we pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. A couple of dads who want to honor God in being a husband and in being a father. Glad you could join us at the King's Table. If you would like more information or resources from King's Hill Church, you can visit us online at www.kingshillboston.com.